The word Kala means time, the word Kala means space. 400 BC, there's a, there are documents where clearly the word Shunya… We see physicality as a consequence of cyclic. If you ride the centrifugal, then you're released, a tangent is formed. But you had spoken about space, which I see personally as a consequence of time. Well, let me just uh, articulate in simple words, what is the way we see the universe and see if how many overlaps are there and if there are things that don't overlap, we can examine why they don't overlap. It's like this, in the, in the yogic principle, the universe was like this. This is usually represented as an arborist, a snake, a cobra running into each other, mouth and tail included, and a hood rising here. So, this is not the European obrus, I know, they make it a circle, but this is how it was. So, we call this Anant, that means it's infinite. It's… Infinite. Infinite, yeah. Infinite, I'm sorry, we're <laughs> Indian. <now. laughs> you invented the concept <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm… I want to tell you it's not a concept. This infinite or infinity was like this. The nature of infinity, I don't have to tell you, but for everyone. Uh, if you make infinity plus ten, it's still infinity. Infinity minus million, still infinity. So, your mathematics don't work. You do plus, minus, multiply, divide, nothing. So, it was like this. You could do nothing with it. Then it unfolded and became like this. Then we call this shunya. Oh. Shunya means emptiness. It became empty. What is… what was infinite became empty. This is very important to understand this. What was that which is infinite? Was it not empty? We could not even call it empty or full at that time because it's infinite. There's no plus minus to it, no multiplication and division to it. So it was this way, it uncoiled itself to become nothing. Nothing means we must put a hyphen between no and thing. It is a no thing but it has a presence now. This presence, I'm assuming, maybe this presence is what the modern scientists are calling as dark energy or dark force or whatever. But it's very appropriate because we call this shunya or kala. The word kala means empty, the word kala means darkness, the word kala means time, the word kala means space. All these four things became somewhat manifest because it became a kala. So this is here as emptiness, but we call this infinite space. You must mark my words, it's infinite… infinite space, not time, because there is no distinction. It is time which is unfolding to become space. So once it became kala like this, you can see it as emptiness, you can see it as time, you can see it as space, you can see it as the manifest… first manifestation of that which doesn't have a form. Anything that doesn't have a form is also called color. So, what was infinite space became zero, now plus one is plus one, minus one is minus one. Suddenly, there is… there is no physicality yet, but there is a mathematical foundation for its physicality. Now, once it became empty like this, this the word shunya is, in terms of written word, for the first time it's seen about 400 BC, there's a, there are documents where clearly the word shunya and the, the, the mark of a zero is there. It traveled to Arabia in early, uh, you know, the next part of how we count time today. CE. CE. It's called CE now, hmm. common era or something. Oh, CE, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in the common era, in the first, second century, or maybe by third, fourth century, it traveled to Arabia because Indian traders were maintaining trade routes from India, from right from the bottom of India, that is southernmost parts of India, right up to Damascus, Jerusalem, Aleppo. Even today, Aleppo city is supposed to be 8,500 years old and that city was built by taxing the Indian traders. So. The live transaction was a daily business, people were traveling quite a lot. 
So it traveled to Arabia where they called it cipher. The word cipher again meant empty. This cipher came to Europe, in Latin they called it Zephyrium. That went to Venice, Venice where it was the hub of many things happening in Europe. And there they called it zero and the English called it cipher. Mm. These days nobody's using that word cipher. When we were growing up, it was common to use the word cipher in English language. We used to use the word cipher as a zero. When say, it was used in a derogatory way, oh, he's a cipher, <laughs> Man, yeah. he's nothing, <laughs> kind of thing. So, this aspect, once it became nothingness, but it was a firmament mm. of tremendous existence, but without physical form. Then we go into a more, mm, what to say, a dialectical way of expressing this, where we say, we're calling this kala as a being, a large, formless, not large, infinite, formless being. Infinite cannot have a form, of course, so it's a being. And he breathes. He was inhaling, inhaling is a long process, maybe running into millions or billions of years, there are calculations for that, I'm not the mathematician for that. And when he exhaled, when he exhaled, it's not that he has nostrils, he exhales from everywhere. If you did not have no... actually even our skin is resp... you know, it's not only perspiring, it's also respiring, you know. So we are breathing through our every pore in the skin, like that when he breathed, that created a certain amount of energy, that we call as shakti. Shakti came out of him. When energy came out of him, then this... this firmament of nothingness, which is a powerful force, it started reverberating initially, then caused ripples, those ripples led to cyclical movements. So with these cyclical movements, the first physical forms came out and it all over burst forth. As these cycles became more and more complicated, from uh, whatever we call as electrons, protons, a atoms, planetary systems, universes, all these evolved because of the cyclical movements. Fundamentally, we see physicality as a consequence of cyclical movement. Our very birth is because of the cyclical movements in our mother's bodies, otherwise we wouldn't be born. We want to break these cycles. So any cycle naturally has a centripetal force and a centrifugal force. If you get caught up in the centripetal, you get crushed. If you ride the centrifugal, then you're released, a tangent is formed. So, to attain to this tangent is the goal of life in the East. We call this mukti, nirvana, moksha, whatever. Essentially, we want to ride the physical cycles in such a way we are liberated from the physical cycle.